Hello everyone and welcome to another, I don't know what to call this. This is a very special announcement, special video. And as the title says, is this really that expensive of a watch? That's why this entire episode is dedicated to a single watch that you see here. At a glance, you're gonna say, wow, Roman, that's a gold JPS or a John Player special Daytona Paul Newman dial, right? And it's so it seems it might be. But this one is a lot more special. Not to downplay any JPSs out there. A JPS Daytona, Paul Newman Daytona, is an extremely special watch. And how can it get even more special? Well, guess what? Now, you guys have seen a few videos where I featured a gentleman by the name of Bob Marin. In fact, those are some of my most viewed videos. And as much as I'd like to be the one to tell you about how special this particular Daytona is, instead, I decided to invite Bob Marin back to the show so that he can use his 35 years experience of handling these watches, selling these watches, tell you about the current market on these watches, and tell you why this particular JPS is not just is not an ordinary JPS, but a home run out of the park, lights out, JPS of all JPSs. Bob, welcome to the show. How are you? Good to see you again, Roman. I love coming on your show. I love you and I love your fans. Well, Bob, as you know, we've talked about this watch prior. And the reason I reached out to you first and foremost about this watch is because you're probably one of the only humans on earth that have sold more of these than anyone else. Not that there's a lot of these in existence, but I know that in your 35 years experience, you have sold so many Paul Newman Daytonas in so many different variations. And right now, as we are talking, I know both me and you are watching a very, very special auction that's going on as we speak. Sotheby's is running an online auction right now on a Paul Newman John Player special, a 6264 in 18 karat gold circa 1969 and the current bid is up to 1 million British pounds and let me put this in perspective for you boys and girls um, based on today's conversion rate is roughly 1.3 million dollars if you add the 24 percent buyer premium we're up to 1.6 million dollars on this watch now why am I so excited about this well for one the auction is not over this auction doesn't end until July 31st 5 a.m. so we still have 12 hours to go so we don't know if it, it will go higher it may very well do so now Bob can you explain to the viewers real quick why am I so excited about the fact that this watch is $1.6 million? Well, Roman, you and I both know that two of these watches sold for about 600000 in December of last year, which were bargain prices because these watches traditionally sell $800,000, six to $800,000. And we knew that these watches were underpriced. We saw Lemon selling for a million to a million two fifty. God knows what they're worth today. And we've been waiting and waiting for the spike, and I think it's come. You know, Roman, you and I talked about this personally. In 2008, when there was an international financial markets meltdown, the price of Paul Newman's, which I've always said are the Dow Jones of the market, plummeted down 50% from 100 to 120,000. They went down to 50, 60 grand. As soon as we recovered at the end of 2009, coming into 2010, they not only recovered, but they doubled. And sometimes these economic disasters of any sort are what it takes to move the market. Nobody can really put their finger on why the watch market is so hot right now, but we are all killing it. Watches are killing it, especially vintage watches. And this is not that surprising. Three weeks ago at Phillips, a JPS broke a world record and sold for 1.1 million. Daytonas are off the chart right now, and they have a long way to go. I know for a fact that we've got car guys and art guys that have entered our market. Maybe it's because everybody had a chance to sit down at some of the silver linings of COVID and think about it and look at it and see what's happening and understand how undervalued our watch market is as an investment. I'm going to ask you to back up for a second because you mentioned lemon dial. Me and you do know what a lemon dial is. If you could just quickly explain to us that why the lemon dial is more expensive versus a regular JPS dial. Now, the lemon dial, all it is, is basically the reverse of the dial that you see here. Okay, well, look, you have a Paul Newman Gold Daytona, which has a cream dial. However, very few of them have beautiful dials with a deep lemon color with white print on the sub dials, black sub dials. They are the counterbalance to JPSs, which are black with gold sub dials and a gold outer track. Both of those watches have competed over the years for value. And Lemon took 
the trophy over the last couple of years. We saw Lemon selling for a million, a million two, and we saw JPS's selling for six to eight hundred. They seem to have come down a little bit in December, as I said again, five to six hundred thousand. But here, three, four weeks ago at Phillips, actually, yeah, at Phillips, a JPS sold for one point one million dollars, which is up in Lemon territory, and. Now, today, we're seeing that a JPS is going to go for over $1.6 million. I'm predicting $1.8 all in at the end of the day. It's, it, it, it's, it's three times what they were selling for less than a year ago. I'm not surprised. I've been saying for years that these watches are undervalued. Look, I watched Andy Warhol, Maryland's go from 10000 to 300000 almost overnight. I watched the 250 GT short wheelbase go from 30 million euros to 90 million euros today, when the big boys get in the market and understand the rarity and the value, sky's the limit. Do you think this has something to do with the fact that people are realizing that they need to park their money in places other than traditional investments, such as the stock market, such as mutual funds, your traditional investments? You know, I know some people are parking money in uh, digital currency right now, thinking that's gonna be the next big thing. But at the end of the day, I see, I see the trend myself when a lot of my clients that are reaching out to me for more and more vintage watches. I'm a modern guy, but now I got a bunch of guys reaching out to me for those blue cheap watches, right? The 3,700 paddocks, the 5402 automars that are still within reach, within that $100,000 price range. Because now, again, I talked about this before, it's a passion investment, but at the same token, a lot of guys feel that it's a safe heaven to pick, park money, and it's all relevant. You know, if you're somebody that's worth $10 million, you can park some money in $100,000 watches. If you're someone whose net worth is a lot more, you can park your money in watches such as these. But let's get back on topic. So let's talk about the JPS that I have, and why is this watch more special? It seemingly looks exactly the same as the watch we're watching in auction right now, but yet this one is 10 times more special. I'm gonna let Bob tell you guys why that's the case. The watch on your desk is known as a JPS Cherry Reverse Lemon. It's the most important Paul Newman ever made, the most expensive Paul Newman ever made. Less than five have surfaced. It's the most beautiful watch I've ever seen in my life, and certainly the most desirable. And it is undoubtedly, we know from the serial numbers, the last gold Paul Newman ever made, and I'm including the legend, which I'll explain in a minute, but possibly the last Paul Newman in any metal ever made. This is a watch that all four that have been discovered share very close range in serial numbers. They're all 2.7 million, placing them at the end of 1970, perhaps even edging into 1971. And they combine all three of the most important, most desirable, and rarest features of any gold Daytona, Paul Newman or not. You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there that comes from the internet, not from you, but Paul Newman's or exotic dials were always desirable, always impossible to get, and always went to only the most special customers. Okay, let's talk about the three things that make this watch special. Number one, gold watches, Paul Newman or non-Paul Newman, did not have Daytona in red. There is no big red gold watch, except the Cherry logo. A 6262 Cherry logo, which is a plain black dial, not a Paul Newman dial, on a gold Daytona, pump pushers, with red Daytona. Brought, over, it brought in excess of a half a million dollars almost 10 years ago in auction. More today. And that's when regular gold watches were bringing two hundred dollars to $250,000. Why? Because it's so rare that it has the Daytona in red. There's your cherry logo. Next, we've already talked about JPS, which is a black dial with gold outer track, gold subdials, so named for the John Player special cigarettes in London, uh, the race car, um, the F1 race car, which is black and gold. It's for sure tied with lemon as the most desirable. And then you've got the lemon. So the difference with a lemon and a cream dial is that the lemon is a deep gold, deep, deep yellow, yellow color. You, when you see it, you recognize it immediately. 
Now, what your watch has is all three elements. First of all, it's a JPS. It's a black dial with golden sub-dials. Second of all, it's a cherry logo. It has Daytona in red. Never before seen publicly. This is the first time it's ever been seen publicly on a black JPS dial. But more important, the sub-dials of your watch and the outer track are not gold like a JPS. And I've given you a comparison. They're lemon color. It's a reverse lemon. It's almost as if to say, and keep in mind, that the watch that's in Sotheby's right now, and most JPSs, are in and around the 2.1 to 2.3 million bracket, dating them 1969-1970. This watch that you have is 2.7 million, again, dating it 1971. Therefore, one can imagine, and we can extrapolate a pretty good educated guess that when Rolex decided to make the last Paul Newman dials, and we know of four, maybe you found the fifth, we can imagine that they took the three most desirable elements, cherry, JPS, and lemon, combined them, and made this incredible dial that has, you know, I could say this confidently because I've thought to myself, it's never be before been seen in public. The people that own the other ones, and I've showed you images of them, are very private, individual, very upper-end collectors on the higher-end spectrum of Daytona collecting. Well, Bob, first of all, thank you so much for a detailed explanation. Of course, as I told you guys, I knew this information. I've spoken to Bob about this watch, obviously, prior to getting this watch. Uh, but he just has a way of explaining it that I possibly could not explain just the same. Personally, I feel like I was on an antique roadshow. This is the, so how about we get to the part uh, where you tell me how much this watch, in your opinion, is really worth, and I fall off the chair and do the thing when Peter Plains was on an antique roadshow and he told him how much his Daytona is worth. I'm going to come right up with it. It's a $5 million watch. It could be a $6 million watch, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, you mentioned antiques roadshow. The guy fell over when he was told he had a half a million dollar watch. I know personally that the watch traded for a million bucks shortly thereafter. I said that in one of my videos. I told guys, I said, the estimate that he got, don't be surprised if you see that watch sold for over a million. The first JPS Cherry logo, reverse lemon, that I ever had was five years ago. I sold it to a very important dealer that you know. That was five years ago, and I sold it for two million bucks, million eight euro. And this is the somebody that was, that understood the watch. I offered it to one person and he bought it immediately. It was so crazy, he took three days to vet it. Then he sold it, the guy he sold it to took it to Rolex. There was a whole vetting process. And the guy that owns it now, I know, wants six million euros for the watch. And I don't think he's crazy, some people do. Consider this, that same weekend that I sold this watch for two million bucks, and that was in 2014. I sold three JPSs. We were at a show in New York for 550, 600, and 600. Now, we're now seeing JPSs at three times that value. If I sold this for 2 million then, you would think this might be worth 6 million today. Except the higher price stuff. You know, they say when you buy the best, forget the rest. There's always somebody that'll pay more than you. That higher priced, important stuff is the stuff that grows exponentially over the rest. So for all I know, it's an eight to $10 million watch. People will call me crazy for saying this and I may regret it, but that's how I see it. If the watch was in my hands, I'd ask no less than 5 million bucks for it, Roman, you know me. Okay, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I got a price for Bob Marriott. I don't know if I'm gonna charge somebody $5 million. You know, my business model is a little different. I charge people based on what I pay. As you can imagine, I did pay an arm and a leg for this watch, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, this is a watch that's going to go to someone that understands the watch first and foremost, and I hope Bob Marin's explanation shed a little bit of light, uh, light of how special this watch really is. You know, the, the title that I put on this video was not meant to be a clickbait bait title. This is more of an education for me as it was entertainment and a little bit of education for you guys because indeed what you're looking at is probably the most special Rolex Daytona out there to date. 
Uh, probably one of the rarest. I was I would call, I would go out on a limb and say one of the rarest Daytonas out there. We saw the legend, which was a screwed on oyster Paul Newman, uh, cream color, a lemon, a lemon Daytona screwed on. There's only been three. There's now four known. We saw it sell at Sotheby's for four million dollars plus. Excuse me, that was Phillips two and a half years ago, three years ago. You were in the room when that happened. Well, I was in the room jumping for joy because two weeks later I sold mine for closer to $5 million. And this is a much prettier, much <laughs> rarer. Obviously, Bob. Uh, let me tell you this. I'm really curious to know, and don't tell me because I'm going to just wait and see. Oh, by the way, I forgot to put the, uh, my agent is standing up there. There you go. I mean, they, I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of the guys follow you on Instagram. So, but in case you don't, check out Bob's hat. There you go. There it is. Um, look, Roman. If it was me posting the video, you know, the title would be "This is what a ten million dollar look the watch looks like." I know the low value I put was five, so I'm going to predict you're going to use that value because I know that you sell cheap. Uh, let me help you any way I can to sell this watch and make sure it goes to a good home. Congratulations on having it, and uh, I'm here for you for whatever you need. Bob, I really, really appreciate having you on the show. I really appreciate going into much detail in regards to why this watch is so special. Before we go, we got to do one more thing. Now, look, I'm going to show you in my camera here. But as you can see, I am still, as a tradition at this point, I am still wearing the very first vintage watch that I've ever bought for myself for 8000 bucks, courtesy of Bob Marin. I'm still wearing my single red seed What are you wearing? I see an AP on your wrist. That's my favorite brand. What are you wearing, Bob? But honestly, I wasn't prepared. I know that you talked to me about this watch. I should be wearing a Daytona, but I'm wearing a, uh, a Jumbo oh Steel, a real early one, no leap year, with a Yves Klein blue dial. It's pretty, isn't it? I bought this watch from you 11 years ago. You did? I paid you $18,000, and it's worth about 118000 today. So let me thank you also. <laughs> did I really sell you that watch? You did, yeah. I'm going back in my quick boost. I'm going to look this up. Hey, look it up. You sold this watch to me in 2011 in Las Vegas. Fuck. <laughs> Bob, it's always a pleasure. Look, I can't wait for all this COVID nonsense to be over so we can all start traveling. We can all start seeing each other live. I'm sure my, fa my fans always enjoy it when you come on to my show. And hope, I'm hoping in the next video that we do, we're actually next to each other and not talking through a Zoom phone call. And I hope I'm wearing a Daytona. Yes. Guys, I want to thank you. I want to thank you once again for tuning in for this special announcement, this breaking news type of video. I really, really wanted to share this with you. Normally, this is not a watch that I would share with the world. This is a sale. Uh, sales of these watches, every single sale of those watches, unless it's an auction environment, usually is done privately. But you know what? I consider you guys my family, and I felt that if I get something truly, truly special, this is probably one of the most special watches I've had on my show. I felt it was my responsibility to share it with you guys and once again bring on an expert to talk about it in more detail guys thank you for tuning in as always hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber i'll see you guys next week for more watch reviews and other videos